some 60 Americans, including our fellow citizen whom you just saw bound and blindfolded, are now beginning their sixth day of captivity inside the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. On November 4, 1979, Iranian students seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran and held 66 Americans hostage. This takeover was part of an ongoing revolution against the Shah of Iran in the United States. Although the hostages would be released 444 days later, the consequence of this failed diplomacy would strain relations between the United States and Iran for years to come. Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi was the leader of Iran and was helped into power by the United States in 1953. Everyone remembered that the U.S. had put the Shah back in power. All right, that was number one. Number two, the Shah was a very good friend of the United States. We considered him one of our strongest allies. He was a, sort of the, the way to keep peace and stability in the Middle East. The Shah contributed to the crisis by refusing to follow the constitution of Iran and having strong relations with the West. In 1963, he officially started the White Revolution, a program to westernize Iran. The Islamic calendar and clothing were modernized, Iran's most holy shrine was demolished, and Iran's anger towards the Shah increased. During the changes that the Shah was making, a high-ranked Islamic leader, Ruhollah Ayatollah Khomeini, led many protests and started the revolution against the Shah. The Ayatollah and the Shah debated over how the country of Iran should be run and had very different opinions. In the early 1960s, the Ayatollah Khomeini was arrested twice for his opposition towards the Shah's belief. He was exiled in Iraq for 14 years. During those 14 years, the Ayatollah student smuggled his sermons and plans for the revolution. He was forced out of Iraq in 1978, but refused to return to Iran until the Shah left. On January 16, 1979, the Shah left Iran seeking medical treatment for his spreading lymphatic cancer. Two weeks later, the Ayatollah returned to Iran and was triumphantly welcomed by a crowd of about 3 million. Because of his beliefs and leadership, the Ayatollah became the leader of the Islamic Revolution. It was known that the Shah was going to the United States for treatment, so in September 1979 the planning to seize the embassy started. It was originally planned by a group called the Muslim Student Followers of the Imam's Line. The original plan was to occupy the embassy for a few hours to announce their objections to the United States, then hold the hostages for no longer than a week and demand the return of the Shah to be tried and executed. Hundreds of thousands of people were chanting out in front of the American embassy uh, because they wanted the Shah to return. Although the students were followers of the Islamic belief, the Ayatollah had no part in this plan. On November 4, 1979, around 6.30 a.m., roughly 300 students, all part of the Muslim student followers, gathered at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran. The whole street just unloaded into the American Embassy. Once they were inside the gates, the U.S. Marine Guards were outnumbered and dashed inside to destroy important documents. There were 12 of us destroying classified material. We held out, the 12 of us did, for approximately uh, two and a half extra hours. Once the 66 hostages were blindfolded and handcuffed, they were placed in front of cameras to get the point out to the world that hostages were taken and Iran wanted the Shah back. He was turned to face reporters and cameramen and several hundred Iranian demonstrators outside the embassy's gates. Yankee go home, they cried, but they made no attempt to harm him. Once the hostages were taken, the United States immediately put diplomatic pressure on Iran in order to release the hostages. On November 12th, President Jimmy Carter ended all oil imports from Iran. He also froze all of Iran's assets in the U.S., which totaled around $8 billion. 
Many Iranians in the United States political environment were expelled. However, these diplomatic pressures failed to have an effect on Iran because there were other countries they could sell their oil to and they weren't dependent on their assets in the United States. Former Vice President Walter Mondale said, quote, We tried everything we could think of to obtain the return of our hostages. In the early months, we talked to some of the leaders of the new government, most of whom were ousted from office. As a result, we worked through the special interest section in the Swiss Embassy in Tehran, we tried private intermediaries, we invoked more traditional diplomatic channels around the world, the UN, and wherever we thought it might help. None of it did any good." Unquote. After many failed attempts at a diplomatic solution, President Carter resorted to military action. He approved mission Eagle Claw to rescue the hostages. On the night of April 24, 1980, a number of transport planes met with eight helicopters at airstrip Desert One in Iran. As our team was withdrawing after my order to do so, two of our American aircraft collided on the ground following a refueling operation in a remote desert location in Iran. Eight of the crewmen of the two aircraft which collided were killed and several other Americans were hurt in the accident. But those eight men, they perished so that we might have had a chance to have been freed early. In mid-November, the Ayatollah released 13 hostages and the 14 would be released eight months later. The remaining 52 hostages would be held for the next 444 days. On July 27, 1980, the Shah of Iran died of lymphatic cancer in Cairo, Egypt. The Shah's death made Iran more open to negotiations to end the hostage situation. During the next few months, the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria acted as a diplomatic liaison between Iran and the U.S. and assisted in the writing of the Algiers Accords. The Algiers Accords was a treaty stating the United States would unfreeze all of Iran's $8 billion in assets. It also said the U.S. was not allowed to interfere with Iran's internal affairs, the countries would end lawsuits against each other, and all Iranian debt to the U.S. would be paid. On January 19th, Iran and the United States signed the agreement. On January 20th, 1981, shortly after Ronald Reagan was inaugurated, the hostages were released. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Good evening. 41 minutes after Ronald Reagan was sworn in as this country's 40th president, the American hostages in Iran began their flight to freedom. The American people really went out of their way to remember all of us and didn't forget us while we were there. Even though we didn't know it at the time, it sure felt good to finally learn about it. The people that lost their life in the desert that tried to come over to rescue us, Peter, they gave their life so that they could try to re-establish us the freedom that we all take for granted each and every day. Although the U.S. was successful in safely retrieving the hostages, the failure in U.S. diplomacy continues to impact relations between Iran and the United States. For more than 20 years, the United States have tried to manage Iran through isolation, threats, and sanctions. In 1993, the Clinton administration believed Iran should be contained because they supported terrorism and were developing nuclear weapons. This policy called for economic action against Iran, restricting all U.S. investment and trade and denying Iran access to supplies, money, and weapons. In 2002, President George W. Bush claimed Iran was part of an axis of evil and they were arming to threaten the peace of the world. President Obama is currently in conflict with Iran, stating that Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons will lead them down a path that is going to lead to confrontation. They had stabbed every president since President Carter. President Reagan, Iran-Contra. President Bush, President Clinton, President Bush, President